this morning I posted I'm I'm finishing up our study of First Corinthians just in my own personal time as we look to just this fall and as we're gonna walk through just real people, real church, real grace, and what that looks like for us just to study the book of First Corinthians together to see what it's like to really know Jesus in a way that we bring our authentic selves one to Him, but then two that we're authentic with one another, and in that it creates some messiness, some awkwardness, some weirdness, and. It's funny because there's so many things that we project church to be, that it's great preaching, that it's great music, that it's uh, buildings, that it's facilities, that it's programs, that it's all these different things. And yet, in the end, what Paul seems to be saying in 1 Corinthians is you can speak with these tongues, that you can have these amazing prophecies, that you can do all these things, but if I do not have love, I'm bankrupt, is the way that Eugene Peterson translates it. And I think about that just in essence of our lives, that there's so much yesterday why do we do what we do there's so much in our lives that we're seeking to to make something right to build a legacy to leave something to our children to have a reputation and so what's weird is is always 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 the subtle lie is is that as we seek to build a tower or a throne for ourselves it has to be built on top of other people and that's just not the way that God has ordained life. He's ordained life not for us to step on one another, but to be with one another, to love one another, to serve one another, to cultivate together, to build together. And so you can be the greatest, for me this morning, thinking I can be the greatest preacher, teacher, pastor in the world. But the oxymoron of that is the way that we've evaluated that is by numbers, by size, by popularity, by likes, by book deals, by all these other things by views online but in reality it's simply the question is is do you love that when jesus is asked what are the greatest commandments it all boils down to do you love god and do you love people and that's oftentimes it's not done in celebrated visual public ways it's done in private moments of listening of sending that text or writing that letter or speaking that word or this giving of ourselves without an agenda because that's the thing is we don't love people so that they become christians we love people because we love god and yes in turn the spirit will do that work the spirit is who plants the seed the spirit is who harvests the fruit and so we want our roots to grow deep into the gospel of jesus that at the end of the day, he said, it's by your love for one another that people will know that you're my disciples. Not that they'll know you, but that they'll know that you're my disciples. And so I'm thinking about that today. What are ways that I'm bankrupt because I'm not loving? That's a tough question to ask. And when then we ask, well, who am I supposed to love? Oftentimes it's the people right around you, right in front of you. It's the people closest to you. It's also those people that maybe you're plaguing your mind, that, that enemy, that, that kind of mental opponent that you're trying to defeat, that instead of trying to defeat them, maybe start praying for them. Thinking of ways that you can love them and you go, well, what if they don't return it? Well, love keeps no record of wrongs and love is not about reciprocity, it's selfless. And so that's hard for me because I'm learning I'm so selfish. And so I'm praying for God to get that out of my heart. But it's going to take some deep tilling work in this soil for those love roots to grow deep. God, thank you. Thank you that you're not just loving and you don't just do loving things, but that you are love, First John tells us. And so God, help me not to complicate this, but to just look at you, to see what you've done in my life, to see how you've loved me most often at my worst, because that's the larger amount of time that I've spent toiling and focusing on myself and trying to build something for myself and giving you and others the leftovers. And instead, I pray that you help me to know how deeply you love me because you made me, because your spirit dwells within me. And so God, help it to take over more and more. Help it to just flood my mind, to overflow my heart, to come out in my words. And so God, I love you as much as I know how and as much as I know how, the definition of that word. And But yet, Lord, I pray like Paul in 1 Thessalonians that my love would abound and increase for you and for your people. And it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. 
Love you guys. I'm praying for you. Pray for me. Going to play top golf today, which that means that I'm going to put a golf club in Titus's hand. So tomorrow, if I have like a scar right here uh, or a concussion, that's why. All right. Love you guys. Praying for you. Pray for me.